Big finish here, folks. Big finish, kids. Gear up here. This is going to be good. You know, in, in 1974, when I was working for Leroy McGurk and the Big Cowboy, they figured out that I should be refereeing in addition to putting up window cards, the ring, the ring crew and all that stuff. I didn't mind it a bit. Part of my due paying. But then all of a sudden I get this referee assignment. Hey kid, tonight you're going to referee Harley Race versus Dory Funk Jr. in the main event for the NWA title. My little balls, they disappeared. I don't know where they went in, this, in that 70s, <laughs> but I was, I was a little apprehensive. Because I, I play these games on myself like, okay, if you count the wrong guy down, you'll probably be ostracized and blackballed the rest of your life because you screwed up the NWA title match. And God damn it, JR, I wasn't JR then. There's nothing more important than the MWA title. At that time in our life, there wasn't. I'm happy to see that the NWA title is being resurrected. I think that's a wonderful thing. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate what uh, Billy Corgan's doing and David Ghana. They have a great champion in Nick Aldis, who will meet here momentarily. He's really an overachiever, by the way. He's not only a great worker, but he really overachieved marrying Mickey James. <laughs> and if you follow him on Facebook like I do, you follow their little son growing up in front of your very eyes. It's, it's heartwarming because this is our family, guys. You think the guys at ESPN or, or USA Today give a shit what we're doing here tonight? No, they don't care. It's us. So we got to leave here with something tangible and care about what we're doing. If you're a, a worker and you're making money in this business and you don't want to give back to it, then shame on you. I don't want to have anything to do with your ass because you're a loser. Simple as that. Golly. I care to wear there. <laughs> He may be the greatest NWA champion of all time. In 1974, when I was asked to do the uh, toll of the book to do the uh, Dory Jr. Harley Race match in the Tulsa Fairgrounds Pavilion, we had an amazing house, thank God, for those two guys, because nothing un underneath it meant anything. They meant a lot. And somehow, I got the chance to referee that match. I have no idea why. Did I deserve it? I don't know. Cowboy thought I had potential. So it was up to me to step up the plate and do my job. I was so scared that every false finish I was going to count the wrong guy down. They said, well, when you go out the ring, you're going to do a Broadway. And I'm thinking, I'm walking the ring and I find my, my, my guy, Leo Voss, who's an old time referee there. And I said, Leo. What the hell is this Broadway thing? <laughs> well, uh, kid, that's a time limit draw. Oh, okay. I thought it was some New York rules thing, you know, brass nuts, mafia, subways. I didn't know what it was. So it was a Broadway. So then I go in the locker room before the match. Hardy's doing his normal warm up, smoking a Marlboro. Junior's in the other side of the dressing room looking at his boots. He ain't worried. What's he got to worry about? He's adoring his fucking junior for God's sakes. So Harley says, hey kid, show me how you count. So I get down on the floor and I count one, two, three. He said, you count that way every time? I said, every damn time. I said, good, that's all I need to know. So I'm waiting for Junior to tell me something. Nothing. Kayfabe the kid. Harley, you're done. You leave. He smokes another Marlboro and I walk out the door. So I go to the ring to, to referee my first Broadway between two of the greatest in the history of our business. 
and I'm 22 years old. God Almighty, how good was that? How good was that? I'm so blessed. So it's really cool tonight to be here to help induct uh, Dory Jr. with this Luthes Lifetime Achievement Award because if anybody embodies a Luthes, it's got to be Dory Jr. It's got to be Dory Jr. Smooth as silk. Amazing. Psychology personified. The feel of the wrestling business was never more prominent than when Dory Funk Jr. stepped in the ring and it wasn't about hurricane runs and high spots and how much daredevil bullshit you can do. It was about wrestling and physicality and passion and realness. That was what Dory Funk Jr. was about in his entire era. The only thing I would add to that movie was Brother Terry. My brother Dory and I were as good as there ever was. But don't let him kid you. He was always the man. He was always the man. So I'd like to uh, bring up right now the reigning NWA champion, who, by the way, last weekend in Concord, North Carolina, the NWA had a pay-per-view on, on a digital, digital pay-per-view. This cat, Nick Aldis, is the NWA champion. If you don't know that, you should get to know it. He's a hell of a talent. He had an amazing main event with the villain, Marty Squirrel. Did I say Marty Squirrel's name right for you New Japan geeks? I hope I did. I tried. They had an amazing wrestling match. A wrestling match. Not a spot fest. They had a wrestling match. It was physical. It was intense. And it was logical. And it didn't make me roll my eyes and want to walk out of the room and get a bologna sandwich. So, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the reigning NWA heavyweight champion of the world, Nick Aldis to end up Dory Funk Jr. tonight. Well, thank you, Jim and uh, Brian Blair, everybody here at the Cauliflower Alley. Thank you for having me and. Um, Thank you for the tireless work that you do. Uh, I was here for the first time last year and um, it won't be my last. And I'm very honored and privileged to be here tonight to present an award to a man who I feel is really a founding father of this thing that we all love called professional wrestling, Dory Funk Jr. A long time ago, in 1948, just before Mark Henry got started in the business. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, I had to. In uh, Waterloo, Iowa, an organization was formed and a tradition began. That tradition would span generations of promoters, talents, and more importantly, wrestling fans. The NWA. All of it was linked by one common thread more than any other. A piece of hardware that I'm very privileged to hold. We call it the 10 pounds of gold, but its full name is the NWA World's Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. A championship, in my opinion, is only as valuable as the men who have held it before you. And when I think about the list of names who have held the championship that I currently hold, Dusty Rhodes, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, Harley Race. All of those guys are legends, but before we got to those names, we had another name. And the business, in my opinion, is built on great rivalries. And before there was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels, 
Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat. There was Dory Funk Jr. versus Jack Briscoe. About 10 years ago, Dory probably doesn't even remember this because he's helped so many people in this business. I was just getting my start at TNA Wrestling. We were at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. And I was thankfully part of a tag team because I didn't know what I was doing, but my tag partner, Doug Williams, is a maestro and he was doing all the work out there every night while I was learning. I wasn't half bad on the mic, so that's how they kept me around. But Dory Funk came to Universal Studios and I was very respectful, very nervous about meeting Dory because I believe I was broken the right way. I was broken by the Knight family. Many of you will know them better now as the parents of Paige, featured in the uh, Fighting With My Family movie. And they, they broke in the right way. Um, so I, I walked up to Dory and I didn't have any expectation that he would know who I was or had seen any of my work and more or less the first words that came out of his mouth were, I really like the way you blend the British and American styles. And I was so taken aback because that was something that I had hoped to do but was still figuring out how to implement that with television, limited time and different opponents, different styles. And it meant a great deal to me. It meant so much to me because this man that I'm privileged enough to present is one of the most revered and respected champions in the history of our business. Not just here in the United States, all over the world and in Japan. <clears throat> when you think about championships, championship reigns, Being a champion is so much more than just holding a belt if you're doing it right. It's about being a representation of the brand, of your colleagues, of everybody who works tirelessly to make this thing happen. And it's a representation of the fans and the entire business. But it also means that promoters have faith in you to be able to help them make money, to help everybody make money. And believe me when I tell you, back in those days, it was very, very apparent who was having a positive effect on business and who wasn't. So with that in mind, think of this. That man sitting right there was the NWA World's Champion for four and a half years. The only person to hold it longer than him, uninterrupted, was Luthez. So it's very fitting that Dory is receiving the Luthez Award here tonight. Oftentimes I've met old timers who, for lack of a better term, can be a little on the salty side. And that's their prerogative. They're, they're allowed to be. You still show them the respect they deserve. But I've always believed that if you're fortunate enough to have the door of opportunity opened for you, you should be a gentleman and hold it open for the next person coming behind you. Dory Funk Jr. has been holding the door open for decades. His fingerprints are on so much of our great business, not just in the people he influenced, in the wrestlers that he worked with, the wrestlers he helped make a living, but in the people he helped train. Kurt Angle, Edge and Christian, the Hardys, so many more names that I can't list them all. They went to the Funkin' Conservatory. That's passion. JR talked about it just a couple of moments ago. Passion in this business to keep contributing to this great business we all love passion to debut in 1963 and wrestle in every decade since then. Not many people can say that. The fundamental responsibility of being a champion is to leave the championship 
and leave the territory or the promotion, or in this case now, the overall business, in a better state than you found it when it's your time to lose that championship. And the fundamental role of a tradition is everything that it links. Families, friends, colleagues, and time. It's time to thank one of the most important links in our chain of history. And I think that I speak for everybody when I say that there is absolutely no doubt that he left this business in better shape than he found it. So I'm very privileged to present to you tonight the Luthers Lifetime Achievement Award to Mr. Dory Funk, Jr. Thank you to each and every one of you, especially for your support here at Cauliflower Alley. Thank you very much for your support of professional wrestling. And thank you for everything this means to me to have the privilege of standing here in front of you on this great stage in front of all you people who are wrestling followers, less wrestling fans. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you to Nick Aldis, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance, the NWA, William Corgan. Thank you, Dave Lagana, for all that you people are doing to bring the National Wrestling Alliance back to the prominence that it once was. And you're doing a fabulous, terrific job. Thank you very much. Just before I came up on the stage, I don't know if you saw it or not, but Jerry Briscoe came over and spoke to me. It was the first time I'd run into Briscoe here at the Cauliflower Alley. And Jerry looked at me and he said, I'm gonna challenge you. Two out of three falls, one hour time limit, at the Bang TV soundstage in Ocala, Florida, and I want to know if you'll accept the challenge. Well, I do accept the challenge. <laughs> the Briscoe name, there, were, there was nobody like Jack and Jerry Briscoe to work with. They were the finest in the business. And Jerry Briscoe and myself, a lot of big crowds, a lot of sellouts, but Jack Briscoe, Tory Funk Jr., just seemed to, to expand to something bigger and bigger and bigger. And it finally got to where I would be wrestling Jack Briscoe anywhere in the world. It wasn't just Florida, it wasn't Oklahoma, it wasn't just Texas. It was all around the world. And it was due to the credibility that Jack Briscoe brought to the National Wrestling Alliance. And it hurts me that the Jack is gone to no end. He was, he was a fabulous person to be around. And Jerry Briscoe is the same. Thank you. Thank you to Nick Aldis for the introduction. <laughs> I haven't uh, uh, been exposed to something like that. Uh, it was fabulous. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And thank you, thank you to Jim Ross also.
There are many NWA wrestlers here tonight. And I am, uh, have worked with many of them. Jerry the King Lawler, Bob Cook, the Hart family, the Stu Hart family of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Bruce Brody, rep represented here by his wife, Barbara. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Cauliflower Alley President, Brian Blair, who I wrestled in Toronto, Canada, in what was called the largest gate in the history of professional wrestling at that time. It was a uh, tag match, and uh, Brian Blair and myself were op opposite sides. And I, I think Brian Blair snuck up on me and caught the fall. <laughs> but at any rate, thank you, Brian, and, and thank you for all you do for Cauliflower Alley Club and in doing that for all the wrestling fans, fans that are here in, in attendance now. I had a match in Los Angeles with a very famous wrestler at the time, Peter Maivia. The match went one hour to a draw. During the match, he suplexed me back, dropped me on my head, uh, and at the end of the match, it was all Peter Maivia. And I was saved by the bell, continued to be NWA champion, but it was one hell of a match. And I want to recognize Atta Maivia, who is here. Peter Maivia was her father. Luke Hess, at times, was a coach of mine. Uh, at the Flying Mare Ranch in Umbarger, Texas, my father's place of residence, we took all the cars out of the garage and left them out in the weather, and my father had wrestling mats on the, on the uh, floor of the garage. Some of the people that came uh, to train with me, Bob Geigel, and the other one that uh, came in and showed me a lot was Luthez. So technically, Luthez is one of my trainers. The first thing he showed me was a double wrist lock. And it was his trademark move. He would get your arm, bring you over, and it was into the head scissors. Double wrist lock by Luthez like nobody else does it. The next thing he showed me was an elbow smash that goes to the neck or to the head. It goes just like this. He take his elbow and he put it up against your head and he'd smack it like that. I don't know if that's legal or not anymore. <laughs> but that was his favorite move. Let me, let me show you. Show Dick. Show Dick. Show Dick. I got a phone call. Oh, oh, Are you kidding me? I'm not afraid of you, man. Yeah. It, goes, it goes just like this. It works for me. <laughs> Loosen up. <laughs> Loosen up. <laughs> Loosen up, Junior.
Lou was one of my coaches in the early days. I had the privilege of wrestling Lutez three times before becoming NWA World Champion and three times after becoming NWA World Champion. Thank you. Every match was a championship caliber match. Luthez was great, and before I was champion and after I was champion, anything he wanted me to do, it would be there, and that includes in-ring work, uh, outside relationships, and carrying the credibility of the National Wrestling Alliance and professional wrestling. It is a credible sport in its own way. My appreciation to many of my friends, Brian Blair, who I had the privilege to work with in uh, WWE in front of the largest crowd in the history of professional wrestling at the time. Toronto, Canada. Thank you to Scott Keel and Ron Hutchison. You are both appreciated. And I would like to also thank the Japanese representatives that are here from Japan to Cauliflower Alley. I would like to thank them for their support. And thank you again to the National Wrestling Alliance. And then thank you again to NWA President William Corgan, NWA Vice President David Lugana, NWA World Champion Nick Aldis. Thank you to all of you for my career in professional wrestling right here. If, if it weren't supported for the support of the wrestling fans, I would have no career. Thank you to all of you. Have a great day. Good job, Junior. Thank you. You're the man, brother. Nobody better.